Okay, in this problem, we are being asked to sketch the domain of integration and then evaluate the integral of e to the negative x squared minus y squared over a region in R2, which is being described as x is between 0 and the square root of 4 minus y squared, and y is between negative 2 and 2. So first, let's sketch this domain of integration, and we might describe it a little differently than how it's initially presented, and then we'll, we'll uh, finish the integral to get to a final answer. All right, so I'm going to sketch the xy plane. Okay. The bounds of integration tell us that negative 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 2, and 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to the square root of 4 minus y squared. All right, so just thinking about the first bounds, you can imagine that 2 is up here. This is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and here's 2. And likewise, we have negative 2 down here. Okay, so our domain of integration is somewhere between these horizontal lines. x is greater than or equal to 0, which means that specifically we're on the right half plane. So we'll be over here. And then the other bound for x is something that I hope you're starting to recognize. But if you don't recognize what shape is being determined by this relationship between x and y here, um, let's look at it in a little bit more detail. So the very right side of our domain of integration would take the form x equals the square root of 4 minus y squared. What you can do if you don't see what shape this is, is square both sides. So if I have x squared equals 4 minus y squared, and then bring the y squared over, we see x squared plus y squared equals 4. It's not actually the entire circle. I'm sorry if you can't see this at the very bottom. Let me put it here. x squared plus y squared equals 4. So it's part of the circle of radius 2. It's not the entire circle, because when we say that x is the square root of 4 minus y squared, we're saying x is greater than or equal to 0. So we have the right semicircle of radius 2. OK, so this right half disk of radius 2 is our domain of integration. I would rather describe this domain of integration with polar coordinates. So what we can do is, is define a radial coordinate that comes outward from the origin, and then an angular coordinate measuring off the positive x-axis. When we do that, we kind of think of rays emanating outward from the origin, we see that the radial coordinate r is bounded between 0, because we start at the origin, and 2, which is when we reach the edge of this domain of integration. So in polar coordinates, This region is 0 is less than or equal to r is less than or equal to 2. And then for the angular coordinate, if I start on the positive x-axis and rotate counterclockwise, we pick up angles from 0 to pi over 2. If I go the other direction, rotate backwards clockwise, we go from 0 to negative pi over 2. So you want to think of this right half disk as having angles going from negative pi over 2 through 0 up to pi over 2. So the bounds for theta will be negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to pi over 2. I like these bounds better than the ones we started with because they are constant. So let's see what this looks like now if we try to convert the starting integral to an integral written with respect to polar coordinates. Okay, so we can say that the integral from negative 2 to 2 and from 0 to the square root of 4 minus y squared e to the, when I write this, I'm going to pull out a negative and write that it's negative 1 times the quantity x squared plus y squared, then dx dy. This integral can be written in polar coordinates as, let me write it beneath first and then I'll continue over here. So I'm going to say that this is for theta from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and then from r from 0 to 2, e to the x squared plus y squared is going to be r squared. So the uh, ex expression up here is going to be negative r squared. And then when we convert from rectangular coordinates x and y to polar coordinates, we pick up that r. So it's going to be r dr d theta. All right. Let me write one more line down here. What I have here is the integral of an expression where I only see r, I don't actually see any theta dependence here in the integrand, over constant bounds with respect to r and theta. Uh, in that situation, when your bounds are constant and you can take your integrand and think of it as a function of r times a function of theta, 
which in this case is just going to be the constant 1. I really just see R dependence here. You can write this double integral as the product of two single integrals. So we can uh, compute this as negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, 1 d theta. So I'll do that single integral times the integral from 0 to 2 of r e to the negative r squared dr. This is optional. You do not have to take this integral and write it as this product. You can just do the iterated computation in the usual way. OK, if I continue over here now, anti-differentiate 1 with respect to theta, we get theta itself going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's just going to return the, the length of the integral that we, um, the length of the domain for theta, rather. Then for here, I have this expression, r e to the negative r squared. This is going to be a u substitution. Let's set u equal to negative r squared. So that's negative r squared. So that du is negative 2 r dr. That's going to give me a relationship between du and dr that will replace the r and the dr at the same time. Okay, so we'll have um, a new integral over here. When I do the conversion from an integral with respect to r to an integral with respect to u, I want to change my bounds at the same time because the bounds from 0 to 2 were bounds for r. To figure out the corresponding bounds for u, what I'm going to say is when r is 0, u is negative 0 squared. So the lower bound for u is also 0. Whereas when r is, four, uh, is 2, r squared is 4, so u's so upper bound will be negative 4. That. And then e to the negative r squared is going to be e to the u. And then r dr is negative 1 half du, like so. OK, so that's the second integral after u substitution. We can finish up here, so this is going to be pi over 2 minus negative pi over 2. It's going to be pi. Then here, I'll write this as negative 1 half antiderivative of e to the u with respect to u is just u. And then we can plug in our top and bottom bounds like so. And then we have here a total of pi, and then times negative one half e to the negative four minus negative one half e to the zero. E to the zero is one. So we have pi times, well, how about I write this as one half minus one half e to the negative four, like so. Okay, so that is this integral um, done in polar coordinates. In fact, you'd want to do it in polar coordinates.